Hi everyone, welcome to the latest episode of the Enlightenment Now series where we're looking at Steven Pinker's book on the progress humanity has made over the past 250 years. This week we're going to look at knowledge and education. It's going to be a slightly different format this week where I'm going to try and tie in what I think are the five key facts you need to know in this area. Okay, fact number one. Education is yet another success story of modernity. Stephen Pinker tells a story you will no doubt be familiar with by now, that until uh, the 18th century and the Enlightenment, almost everyone was abject of education. Then a few countries started to pull away from the pact, and more recently, over the past 50 years or so, the rest of the world has been catching up and the sort of bounty of education um, is near universal. Just some stats to back that up, in 1820 more than 80% of the world was unschooled. By 1900 Western Europe and the Anglosphere started to um, receive the benefits of an education and today that's true for more than 80% of the world. According to current projections, by the end of the century, everyone in every country in the world will have a luxury of schooling. Okay, fact number two. Education comes with a number of benefits. For instance, according to a recent study, it's actually the amount of schooling children receive in a country, not that country's average wealth, that determines uh, ultimately people's average health and longevity. Education also tends to result in people being less racist, sexist, xenophobic, homophobic and authoritarian. They place Educated people place a higher value on imagination, independence and free speech. They're more likely to vote, volunteer, express political views, belong to civic and voluntary associations, political parties, and so on. Um, they're also more likely to trust uh, fellow citizens. And perhaps more important than any of those things, the more educated people get, the fewer children they have. It's the kind of only reason that the world's uh, population um, is expected to peak around about nine or ten million is that uh, billion sorry is that people are expected to be more educated and decide to have fewer children. Okay, fact number three. Although education has a number of benefits as just spoken about, it's also one of the main drivers of inequality in a country. So basic education seems to be good for everyone, but higher levels of education, such as university level, masters, uh, PhDs, actually are massive drivers of inequalities in wealth. Basically, if you have a degree, you're far more likely to earn more. And so, for example, in the UK, we now have over 50% of people in higher education between the age of 18 to 30. And that's really, over the past 30, 40 years, created a huge divide between affluent and well-educated people on the one hand, and those who are suffering the financial consequences of not having a university degree on the other hand. So we talked about this in previous series as well. We have this kind of increasingly polarized uh, divide in society between two major groups. One that is predominantly urban, better educated, affluent, liberal and culturally diverse. And the other that is more rural, less educated, poorer, conservative and culturally homogenous. Of all these factors, it might be that education is the most important driver, the, the biggest wedge between these two groups and producing uh, the levels of inequality and polarization that we're seeing in modern societies. Fact number four. It's not just making higher education 
uh, institutions more inclusive that will solve this problem, there can be an even greater amount of people at university and there still be a worrying uh, issue which is that some theorists believe that higher education actually instead of skilling people up, instead of providing people with various skills to be able to do engineering or medicine or whatever, actually is more of a positional good. It shows that they're um, of a higher status than people um, who haven't received that education. So even if 100% uh, of society ended up uh, getting a university degree, it might be then that there is a divide between the 20% or the 50% that have a master's degree. If everyone gets a master's degree, there might be a divide between the 20 and the 50% that get a PhD. There's this kind of arms race in higher education where education is used as a signal for employees that people have skills like being committed, being able to sit down and do the hard work or whatever it is, um, rather than actually getting people skilled up in various vocations. So if we really want to see an inclusive educational system, not only do we want to make sure it's inclusive, make sure it's available to everyone, whether their background they're from, whether they're rich or poor or whatever, uh, we also need to make sure that it's actually um, providing people with specific skills to do jobs, not just generic signaling of some kind of uh, status where it's zero sum, where some people have it and others don't. Fact number five. So, Pinker stresses how amazing it is that more and more people are getting educated, in particular people are gaining analytical knowledge, analytical skills, quite logical skills, skills that help us have rational debate, help us do science. But I think this is only missing, well, this is only part of the equation when it comes to knowledge, or even knowledge is only part of the equation when it comes to wisdom and understanding. So again, a more inclusive educational system, uh, or a more holistic one, would include not just analytical knowledge, things like uh, IQ, various reasoning skills, um, but also um, more embodied knowledge, knowledge um, about how to uh, practically do things in the world, knowledge that has a kind of greater depth to it. This is something that Ian McGilchrist talks a lot about in his book, The Master and His Emissary. It's not just our kind of rational, heady knowledge that matters, it's also our embodied, intuitive knowledge, our wisdom of life, if you like. That is the end of this video for now. I hope you enjoyed the new format and I'll see you again soon.